This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Welcome to Open for Business. Mapapanood nyo rin ang programang OFB sa Facebook at YouTube. Mag-like at mag-subscribe sa aming social media at Net25 TV. I am Cesar Vallejos. Welcome to Open for Business. Samahan ninyo kaming tuklasin ng iba't ibang pamamaraan kung paano mapaunlad ang inyong negosyo. Aalamin din natin mula sa mga eksperto ang mga pangunahing trends at mga estratehiya kung paano natin mapapanatili ang negosyo mali. Ito man o malaki ay maging laging open for business. Television has always been a constant source for news and entertainment. Sa panahon ng pandemya, ang telebisyon pa rin ang pangunahing pinagkukunan ng impormasyon ng maraming mga Pilipino saan mang panik sila ng mundo mula sa presyo, usapin sa politika, sa pagninegosyo at syempre sa paboritong mga hosts at artista. However, social media sites and streaming platforms have been gaining traction with clickbait articles and binge-worthy shows. With more sources for media consumption, is television losing its popularity? Or is it still the most powerful medium that helps shape opinions and move people's emotions? Ano nga ba ang sekreto sa loob? sa likod ng TV broadcasting sa Pilipinas. Sa episode na ito, isisiwalat natin ang mga lihim sa likod ng telebisyon at paano nito nababago ang ating buhay at pamumuhay lalo na sa gitna ng pandemya. Open for Business is privileged to have none other than the star maker and ratings master herself, Ms. Wilma Galvante, to discuss the secrets and the future of TV broadcasting. All these in this episode of Open for Business. Isang taus pusong pagbati ng maligaya at pinagpalang kaarawan sa pinakamamahal nating tagapamahalang pangkalahatan ng Iglesia ni Cristo na si Ka Eduardo Manalo. Hangad po namin sa Kongreso ang inyong mabuting kalusugan para sa patuloy ninyong paglilingkod sa Panginoon, sa bansa, at sa mga Pilipino saan mang panig ng mundo. Mabuhay po kayo. Eduardo Manalo, binabati ko po kayo sa inyong kaarawan. Naway manatili kayo, maligaya at malakas. Dagan salamat o happy birthday po. Ka Eduardo, on your birthday and always, we wish you every success and happiness as you continue to do God's work. Happy birthday! Ligaya ang araw po sa nagpamahalang pagpalakan ng Deshini Kasito, kapatid na Eduardo Pimano.
Open for Business is back and our guest today has over 40 years of experience in the Philippine entertainment industry. Her career spans executive and management work with the major broadcast networks that include content creation, production, programming, marketing, promotions, and talent development. She has spearheaded productions of top-rating television shows that garnered major awards and recognitions for her networks. Currently, she has it's a media content creation company that she established together with other industry professionals. She is also a member of the Board of Regents of the Pamantasan ng Lunsod ng Maynila where she graduated as a full university scholar with a Bachelor of Communication Arts degree majoring in Advertising and Public Relations. With her stellar credentials, she is one of the most credible resource persons who can reveal the secrets and the future of TV broadcasting. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Wilma Galpante. How are you, Ms. Wilma? I'm good. I heard a lot of uh, urban legends, and because of your stellar credentials, uh, one of these, yes, one of these urban legends is that Ano daw po, kapag dumada, dumarating daw po kayo ay nahahawi po yung mga functions at yung iba daw po ay ayaw makisabay sa inyo sa elevator kasi natatakot daw po because they think you're like the priestly in uh, Prada or the Meryl Street uh, in Philippine television. How do you, what's the truth to those urban legends, Miss Wilma? Hindi naman siguro madalas. <laughs> well, I won't go sa nila, pero in the work uh, place, I'm very firm. I'm known for that. Um, and uh, I'm a stickler for uh, rules and for uh, process. Ganon. So, alam nila yon. And, you know, I apply this in everything. Siguro once in a while, sa elevator, <laughs> <laughs> Meron akong napapansin. And I'm very open eh. So I think once or twice, pag may talent akong makakasabay sa elevator, papansinin ko sila. Not because yung personal nila, it's because of what I see on television or on screen. So, and then, makikwento yon. Ay, si Ma'am Will, mapinansin yung kulay ng hair ko. Ay, pinansin yung ganito. But then they will change it. O pagtingin mo sa, sa TV next time, nandun sila umaayos. So, um, I just apply everything to to the talents that I see. And anywhere I meet them, madalas sa elevator. <laughs> so, naging ano yun. Pagka may sasaki sa elevator, umiiwas sila. Ayaw siguro nilang mapansin. But then, next time. It came to a point where gustong-gustong na nilang makasabay ako sa elevator. <laughs> okay. Also, Miss Wilma, um, I also uh, heard that um, you don't necessarily attend meetings. And uh, there are uh, just a few reasons why you attend um, meetings. And um, it could be uh, a blessing, you know, if you attend that meeting or it's... Uh, you know, something, it's it's a warning, you know, if you attend that meeting, especially for uh, artists, for production people. How do you find, what's the relevance of these production meetings and what is, you know, your um, treatment or your formula specifically on uh, attending this um, concept development meetings? Mm. When it comes to concept development, I'm there. Um, starting the show, I'm there. Laying down the groundwork of a program or um, uh, defining the concept, I'm there. Pagkatapos nun, casting na, uh, yung sino yung ilalagay mo rito, kakausapin mo yung talent, ito yung role mo, ito yung mangyayari sa'yo dito, I'm there. Tapos, uh, big production meeting, nandun ako. Pagkatapos nun, pababayaan ko na sila. Because it's, it's part of trusting your team and it's part of knowing that they know what to do and how to execute the plan. Yun. Sa mga talents naman, narinig na nila kung ano yung dapat mangyari ang gagawin nila sa shows. Usually sa story ko, ang ganyan. Tapos nun, kanila na yan, show na nila yan, papatakbuhin na nila yan. 
I give them that freedom, that elbow room to um, exercise their creativity, to express their creativity. Kasi meron lahat yan eh. Kaya nga sila nasa trabaho na to, di ba? Mm -hmm. Pagka nandun ka, lagi mo silang re-rendahan, they will be guarded. Mm -hmm. Or hindi sila ma free to talk, yun. Pero yun na nga, siguro legend dito, na I tell them, you will see me here at the start of the show because we're forming this. Um, and this is good news for everybody because we have a show, we have a project, we have another show to launch, we have another baby to take care of. Tapos nun, sana wag na niyo ako makita ulit. Bakit? Diba? Kasi baka pag makita niyo ako ulit, dahil baka may problema pag makita mo ako ulit. Diba? Pag walang problema, you don't need to see me. I don't need to see you. So, parang uh, ganun. The next time you see me, bad news yan. Pakansela na to. So, wag mangyari yun. Okay. Now, ang laki po ng epekto ng pandemic sa um, television. So, uh, halimbawa po sa business, specifically here, I am privileged to interview CEOs, thought leaders, um, talking about um, their businesses closing. So, dito po, uh, with the COVID-19 crisis, we talked about it, it was actually simplified kasi napakadaling i-classify ngayon yung commodities and goods. Essential lang, tsaka non-essential. Ngayon po, ano ang epekto nito sa TV broadcasting? Doon po ba sa counterpart nito, sa especially in the minds of TV viewers, meron na bang relevant programming or irrelevant programming or unnecessary program? How has the pandemic changed um, television? Malaki rin, malaki rin ang effect, malaki rin yung impact. First, in terms of um, acquiring the program, producing the program, na iba, na iba yung dynamics. Uh, before, we were free to go to the studio, we were free to go on location, um, anywhere, kahit saan ka mag-shoot. Ngayon, hindi na pwede yun, di ba? You're always guarded. There's always this protocol that you need to apply to every production that you mount. So, ang laking impact nun in terms of uh, manpower, in terms of casting, in terms of cost, most especially. Kasi, um, parang because of these health protocols, mga 20% yung idinagdag mo sa cost of production. Mm -hmm. Just to apply the protocols, yung protocols ng uh, RT-PCR test mo lahat, mm -hmm. tapos si antigen mo lahat, pagkatapos ibababal mo yung taping mo, ang laki ng cost nun. And then, every day you have to monitor. And then yung, yung um, distancing ng mga tao sa set. Ayun yung off-cam, di ba? Pagdating sa content, pinuproduce mo na talaga, it impacts on the scripting. Kasi, isushoot mo yun eh. So, sa totoong buhay sa actions, hindi mo pwedeng uh, magyayakapan or uh, mag magkakatabi na ganyan. You also apply that to the set. Um, so, it impacts on scripting. It impacts on storytelling. Doon. And um, also on the concepts. Hindi ka na ngayon pwede gumawa ng travel. Paano mo ipapakita yan? You're inviting them to go there when in fact they cannot go there. So there is a way. Parang sinasabi mo lang, when you go to this place, eto na yung ginawa to make it safe for you. That's a... That's a big difference in scripting or in storytelling. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that, or do you expect that this will continue because nobody prepared for this, ma'am? Even in books, we never, <laughs> we never saw this. Although there were some, you know, people who predicted this. Um, it was that, that's very interesting. Even in movies, diba? we see that there's a, a crisis. There's uh, that's going to happen similar to. Um, the, the, the other pandemics, you know, in the past. But do you think po yung networks ngayon, broadcasters or line producers have to always, you know, think of that in mind and consider those um, inputs in specifically in doing their production? Yeah, sa ngayon ganon. And I don't think it will change right away if uh, kahit 
Siguro hanggang next year, ganun pa rin. Sana magbago. Like, we're all hoping na mas maging maluwag, na uh, lahat maging safe na, magkaroon na ng mga measures para maging protected lahat. We're hoping for that. But meanwhile, when we produce, and we don't produce programs just for now, di ba? Sana yung program ang gagawin mo, pag pinanood pa next year, ano pa rin siya, yung... Uh, ma-appreciate mo pa rin. No? Hindi siya nakapako sa nakamask ka, nakashield ka. Di ba? Ang hirap panoorin nun. Uh, like, sabihin mo na, uh, uh, several months from now, pwede ka nang wag mag-face shield on TV. Tapos, paano ka mag-air ng programang naka-face shield? So, you dated the program. Ang shelf life nun, bawas na bawas. Di ba? Because it will really affect the shelf life of the program also. Ngayon, ma'am, doon sa napansin nyo, maraming pagbabago uh, also in media consumption based on my readings about you. You always look out for innovation. You always listen to your audience. You always uh, hear them. You always um, talk with them. You get the feel of the masses. During the lockdowns po, paano sa inyong observation, how are people consuming media during the crisis? I know that, di po ba, marami tayong mga generations ngayon, di ba? From the baby boomers, um, Gen Zs, Generation X, Millennials. How are they consuming media? Kasi uh, in, in our meetings po in the past, talagang we consider our target market. At yun din ang lagi kong uh, sa, sa mga nabasa ko sa inyo, inaalam nyo masyado yung competition. Inaalam Alam niyo what works with this networks at kasi doon tayo nakikipag-unahan kung sino ang dapat manood uh, sa inyo or makinig sa inyo. So, paano yung consumption ng media ngayon? Content is everywhere. Media is on demand. Kung kailan ko gusto, dapat mahanap ko. Kahit last year pa yan or kahit kahapon yan or kahit kanina yan, ngayon ko gusto panoorin, dapat nandyan. Yun ang expectation ngayon ng uh, ng audience, ng market. So, if you have content, like you you have this platform, you have to make it available in all the other platforms. Possibly na kasi ngayon, di ba? You have to make it available and um, pwedeng ma-acquire in any gadget that I have. Diba? Kahit nasa sa big screen ko yan or nasa mobile ko yan, nasa tablet ko yan. Kasi ang style ngayon ng viewing is um, multi-screen. Magsabi ka sa akin ng household ngayon na merong television set pero meron pa rin cellphone. May screen yon, Nakabukas pa rin yung laptop at sabay-sabay pinapanood. Is that how you do it? Is that how you monitor? Yes. <laughs> Ako pa lang yon, And I'm really involved. Pero uh, yung ordinary ordinary uh, market, ordinary viewers, ordinary um, audience, they do that. Sa household, nanunod ng TV, hawak ang cellphone kasi may ibang ginagawa. Pero alam niya yung nangyayari doon. So anong ginagawa? Anong, anong posible ngayon, di ba? What I see there, I'm the, I'm the producer. I'm the content owner. I'm the platform owner. I have to go there. <laughs> so, television lang ako ngayon. Hindi na dapat ngayon ganon. Pagka nasa uh, television yung content mo, make sure it's also on the gadget. Make sure it's also on the laptop. So, it's, um, that's just a device. It's on the platforms. So, tama, di ba? Now, you're on television, but you're also on Facebook, you're on YouTube, you're on Twitter, you're on TikTok. You're everywhere. You're, in, you're on Instagram. Same content. But mm -hmm. anywhere the consumer is, you're there. Mm -hmm. Mom, you mentioned that your content on television has to cross platforms. Ang tanong ko po, napapansin din niyo ba at saka talagang ganun ba ta da dapat talaga ang gawin na TV networks should show content on mainstream television and they will allow the audience to give their feedback 
in other platforms. Is there a science behind it where you produce content for television and you make uh, your viewers react or give feedback via Facebook, YouTube, and you respond to that? How, what's the science behind it? Actually, maganda nga yun na may ganun ngayon. Kasi um, instant reaction, then you can also react right away. Before, wala yan. Wala yung uh, comment agad yung audience. Tapos meron lang ang maririnig mo yun. Matagal. Maghihintay ka ng uh, ratings or maghihintay ka ng mga feedback. Talaga susulat sila sa iyo. Hindi na ganun ngayon. It's always uh, immediate, immediately there. So, uh, may, Part na yan ng metrics ng how you measure the performance of your show, the performance of your artists on the show. Um, sometimes, syempre, the audience can be cruel. <laughs> sometimes they could um, go out of bounds. But then you should be able to discern what would be um, uh, good for your show, what what you should react to. Hindi naman yung basta lahat-lahat papatulan mo. You're malilito ka sa ganyan. Pero, Miss Wilma, ano ang pinatulan nyo noong panahon ninyo? Like, say, for example, I'm sure you also produced programs that were not necessarily liked by the audience. So what are those? Uh, can you cite some examples where you received a letter or you received feedback or management maybe gave you a memo? What uh, are, are those examples that you really have to react to it, change it, or else the audience left you talaga? Mga ginawa ko kasing programa sa experience, mas careful kami sa reaction ng advertisers. Yun. And because it impacts on the business, it impacts on the television is business. <laughs> we do all the entertainment shows, all the formats, even news and public affairs. Um, we do this for also for revenue, for for the network to make revenue from it, for the programs to be able to continue, for the network to be able to continue. Now. Um, Merong mga minsan mangyayari na mag impact ng negatively or hindi magandang impression sa advertisers. And we're very careful with that. Because pag nag-impact ng ganun sa advertisers, you know, tatawid yun sa consumer eh. Yun. Advertisers are careful because they're careful for their markets also. So, ganun yung ingat. Um, sa viewers naman directly, madalas na-affect sila pag sa artista nila. Yun. Pagka yung uh, artista maraming fans, tapos na-hurt siya <laughs> sa show, o sa, may nangyari behind sa taping na ganyan, ay... Uh, maririnig mo talaga yan. So, as a network, anong gagawin mo? Anong gagawin mo sa artista? Uh, siya ba yung mali? Maaring siya yung mali, di ba? <laughs> Tapos, uh, uh, pero marami siyang fans. So, may handling yun. Yung, you take it, depende sa situation, pero hindi pwedeng hindi mo yan pansinin. So, how do you uh, put a balance to that? Uh, listening to your audience while uh, giving priority to what the talent wants or what the manager of the talent wants. How do you strike a balance? Alam mo, for me, I always say na ang kakampi ko yung show. Kahit na talent kita or you're one of uh, the network's big stars, ang kakampi ko pa rin yung show. Yun. Kasi doon tayo eh. Doon din kita ipapakita. So if it will not be good for the show, I will tell you. Yun. Because it will also not be good for you. Yun. Yung, that's how I address it. I, I avoid making it personal to the artista also. It's a different kind of handling. Minsan meron explain. Pero for me, ang safety, ano ko, kakampihan ko yung show. Wala akong kakampi. Kakampi ko yung show. Yeah. How do you build um, credibility and loyalty in um, TV production, in TV broadcasting? We know that with TV broadcasting, minsan kung sino yung sikat, 
doon loyal ang audience, doon loyal ang tao. Kung sino ang may pinagkakakitaan or bankable, doon loyal ang ang ibang executives o ang mga nanonood. How do you maintain that kind of loyalty and credibility? Personally, yung approach ko kasi, even when I was starting, kahit nung PA pa lang ako, ang approach ko sa talent is uh, yung may alaga na kasama. Yun, hindi yung artista ka, ha, production ako, tapos, or artista ka, susundin ko lahat ng gusto mo, or ako yung production, ito yung susundin natin lahat. Hindi ganun kasi yung attitude ko sa tao. So, it stayed with me through the years, and um, later on, siguro, it, it, it comes across as nurturing. And let me make this clear, ha. All of this, I would have done well kung walang support ng network, kung walang team who is also implementing the plans for a single artista. Ikaw lang siguro yung nagbibigay ng, ng unang input yung, or yung direction or yung insights mo, ganyan. Pero laging may platform yan, laging may network support yan. And nakikita naman ng artista yon. Tapos, we define, we decide, eto, pwede natin siyang gawing star. Pwede natin siyang ilagay sa ganitong genre. Ito dito, ito sa ganyan. Ito siya, bagay siya sa ganito. And then, iniisip na namin, ano ang magandang programs niya? So, coming into the year, etong talent na to, alam na niya itong taon na to, the whole year, this will be your projects, this will be your shows, this is how we want to position you, and this is how we want you to grow. Gawin mo lang. Kasi pag ginawa mo yan, then everything else will follow. Your fans will grow, the endorsements will come in, um, which is very important to, to artistas, to talents. No? And then your projects will come one after another. What is interesting with your story um, is really also talks about branding here with Open for Business, ma'am. Talagang a lot of the, you know, even, you know, the smallest, um, you know, business that offers, let's say, a lumpia, you know, or, or kakanin, di ba? When they brand it, it will stand out. How important um, to you is branding the artista or guiding them? Di mo ba napansin, lalo na sa ano natin sa industry ng mga artista natin. Lahat sila may title. Superstar ka, megastar ka, star for all seasons ka, uh, Asia's Songbird ka, yun, or Asia's Nightingale ka. Lahat lalagyan. Kasi yun yung nagmamarka. Positioning is very important because it differentiates you at sasabihin na may value ka kasi may brand ka eh. Effort yun ng um, network to position their talents, to position their stars, also to position the shows, everything mm -hmm. you brand. Sa, sa minds ng audience, mas nagmamarka siya kasi nako-compartmentalize mo sila, hindi lang uh, among the many. So you're not ordinary because you have a brand. In terms of compartmentalization, ma'am, and in terms of branding, Importante din na basa ko sa mga binabanggit mo kung gaano kahalaga yung kausap mo, yung audience mo. Sa pandemic, iba-iba ang tastes ng audiences natin from the millennials, Gen Z, Gen X, baby boomers. Eh, minsan isa lang ang TV, minsan dalawa din naman, or sino bang nasusunod. So, how do you compartmentalize TV viewing and how do you come up with something that will be appreciated by the entire family? First, you know your market. Um, hindi rin naman, uh, ano eh, yung sinasabi mo laging general viewing public, that's good. General viewing public, everybody will appreciate you. But that's not true also, not everybody will appreciate you. Mm -hmm. ba? So, also, as a network, Anong gusto mong gawin sa network mo? Sino ka? Ano ka? Sa mata ng audience mo? How do you connect your network? Ikaw, ikaw halimbawa, net 25 ka. Uh, how do you connect this to your audience? 
And yung audience mo, gano'ng kalaki sila? How do you want to target them? And you know, they, they're different, ha? Iba-iba yan. So what do you do? You give them a variety of program. This is, in, in television, we call it um, balanced programming. Yun. And then you know the best time that this uh, demographics watches TV. Yun. Kailan siya nanonood? Doon ko bibigay yung programa ang gusto mo. Pero ngayon, mas mahirap kasi hindi lang television. Mm-hmm. Diba? Ang kalaban mo, pinakamalaking kalaban mo, social media. Mm-hmm. Pero nagsasabay-sabay. That's why you see content on television and even content na film, bago lumabas yan, nasa yan? Nasa social media yan. Social media is now used as a, a promotions platform. A platform where you tell everybody, hey, this is happening, this is going to happen, something like this is gonna happen. Parang isa siyang malaking advertising platform. Diba? Ganun yun eh. Pag meron kang gustong gawin, announce natin, lagay natin natin sa social media. Eh kaso yun nga ma'am ang tanong kasi uh, in my introduction kanina sabi ko is television losing its popularity is social media the new TV. Television sa perception akala mo it's losing popularity kasi may bago eh parang dumating lang to but it will not go away it will never go away. Even sa yung idea na magiging obsolete na ang television I don't think so. It will be there. It's free to air. It's for the masses. Mm-hmm. Now, when I say mass, masses, it's not only yung strata mm-hmm. na A, B, C, D, E. Mm-hmm. Hindi, hindi lang yun. Everyone, every household will still have a television set. So how are you connected? Yung television mo, are you, are you still uh, subscribing to all the channels? Mm-hmm. Or... Nakaano ka na lang, yung stream na lang lahat. But still, content is there. You will source for the content. Mahirap yung labanan ngayon because you have to make your way, find your way in all this maze of content. And then yung audience, parang ang dami. Dami nilang nakikita, ang dami nilang gustong panoorin. So, your program has to be quick, snappy, and nandun agad. First five minutes, first five, one minute ng show mo, na-attract mo na ako, I will stay. Pero ang attention span, nag-shorten. Because also of social media, ang dami eh. Tapos lampas lang ng lampas, you scroll. Diba? And you surf. And the, the way you mention it, it looks like you're also um, techno-savvy, you know. Uh, you're, you have embraced, you know, digital transformation as, as they... Um, call it with the uh, uh, technopreneurs. Ito ba, ma'am, when you develop uh, your programming, cohesive ba ito dapat? If you talk now with the, with the networks, uh, is that how networks should go to embrace holistically all these um, competitors and be part of it, use it to their advantage? That's how it is going now, in the, in the end future. Iyan na yung now. Iyan na yung nangyayari. When I have a program, if our business is television, I have a program here, it should find its way on all uh, on social media. Um, every time, pwedeng video on demand. Pwedeng nandyan, accessible anywhere I go. Nasa website, nasa, nasa lahat. And depending na sa'yo, how do you want to lure them back to television? That's a challenge. How you lure them back to television. Um, nandun din yung economics eh. Kasi may cost naman ang data. You have to have Wi-Fi, you have to have internet available to you, and you have to have data. Sa phone mo, titipirin mo yan kasi mauubos. Ma. So television ka pa rin pupunta. Pero, hahanap ako, alin dito yung maganda, dito ko hahanap, and then pupuntahan ko. The content that you want to put on social media to attract them to television should be very, very interesting. Should be very engaging. But you have to lure them back to television. Mm-hmm. Dati, nung medyo uh, estudyante rin ako ng journalism, I... Uh, parang sinasabi na ng mga teachers ko noon, umiikli na yung, yung attention span ng mga kabataan. Noong nauso ang uh, millennials, gano, lalong umikli. Mm-hmm. So, 
What is the formula sa tingin po ninyo yung paggawa ng uh, content na um, it's good for television at the same time it's something that um, social media enthusiasts can also appreciate? Is there a formula in it? Paano ba nagiging viral yung yung ibang uh, <laughs> paano ba natin mapapaviral ng yung isang material para papatok sa social media at the same time papanoorin yung less of television when we produce content anywhere uh, even in film ganyan there, there's a formula you don't kasi gusto ko tong gawin parang whim gawin natin to gawin natin to ay magkakagulo ka dyan. there are metrics to study, there are target markets to understand, and there's content, and there is um, the style of storytelling also to take into consideration. Para yung programa mo compelling. I will stay, I will watch this. Tapos, susundan ko yan. Kaya maganda yung na merong serye. Diba? Bigyan kita lang 30 minutes tonight, 30 minutes bukas, then I'll give you a cliffhanger that you will remember <laughs> so that tomorrow, pabalikan mo ko. Ganon. Mm. Eh, yun nga, ma'am. Nabanggit mo na rin, Miss Wilma, uh, mga serye. Isa ka daw sa <laughs> nagpauso nga at nagpagulo ng telebisyon dahil pinauso mo ang mga uh, pantaserye, telepantasya. Uh, telepantasya. Meron na yan, no? Pinabalik mo yung mga superheroes na Pinoy. Uh, medyo isa ka daw sa nagpahirap ng competition din na nagpaangat ng standards. Mm, I will not claim uh, uh, parang na akin lang yan. I will not. Kasi for me, it's always teamwork. It's always, um, meron ka lang naisip na germ of an idea. Pero ang nagpalaki, ang nag-implement, kasali yon sa kabuoang picture. Yun. Hindi ko sasabing ako lang yan. Hindi, uh, kasi hindi yon posible. For example, yung sinabi mong telefantasya, yung, before kasi ang mga programs na may mga uh, effects, di ba? Chroma lang, or smoke effect. Yes, so, at saka makikita mo pa yung, kunyari, pag lumilipad, makikita mo pa yung mga... <laughs> Pagka hindi malinis yung pagka-chroma, <laughs> yun, mangyayari yun. Madali lang, wala ng time mo. Okay na yan, good na yan. So, kita mo, fake yung lipad. <laughs> so, uh, with GMA before, uh, Jemmy was not strong with the prime time dramas. And uh, hindi kasi na build, hindi pa na build. But then we were given the mandate to let's go and build our prime time. Let's go and build our prime time. So it's, uh, it's a marching order which we needed to implement. Just so happens, nand, uh, ako naman kasi yung head ng production. So, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Brainstorming yun. You have to brainstorm. And then you have to bring in the right creative people. You don't know what you're going to come up with until you get these people and let them huddle, let them brainstorm. So from there, determine mo muna what's the strongest competition. The strongest competition at the time when hindi malakas yung prime time ng network was tungang mga fantaserye. Yun. So arali natin yun, and then let's think of something that will compete with this. Yung style pa namin, kinukulong namin yung creative. Yung creative team, naka-lockdown na sila noon pa. So kahit walang COVID noon, naka-lockdown ano naka sila. Tago mo yan, isang ah. buong linggo or isang buong weekend. Magbe-brainstorm lang yan. The network spends for that. Yun. Hindi lang yan tatlong tao, ha? Group talaga yan, brainstorm. Dating kami, tignan namin, ano ito, ano ito, ano ito, yun. So, uh, pero focus. Because you define ano yung gusto mong tapatan. So, again, hindi ito whim. Kasi alam mo kung sino yung gusto mong tapatan. Alam mo kung sino yung uh, competition mo. So, natural, Maglalagay ba ako ng musical dyan? Maglalagay ba ako ng talk show dyan? 
Wag mo na kaya. Tignan natin how we can compete with this kind of concept or genre. No. So, pipigain mo talaga. Yeah, pero, Ms. Wilma, how will you know that it will, uh, you know, click with the market? Paano Hanapan mo ng difference. So, sabi ko nga sa'yo, sa special effects, ako tumuto. Ito, maganda to. Sabi ko, anong difference? Yung mga tao na ang descendant pala nila ay eh, mga bird people. Yun. Tapos yung isang mortal, na, in, na, na, na paibig siya sa isang ganon. Di, syempre, yung buong bayan, magkakagulo. Ay, kung maganda yun. Bakit niyo inisip yan? Yung, yung, susuriin mo pa kung bakit. Eh kasi yung competition natin, nasa dagat sila, doon tayo sa ere. So doon pa lang may differentiation na. Pwede. Ganyan. So patingin, ito yung mangyayari. O oh, sige, maganda yan. Pero hanapin natin. If you can show me birds in flight, tao siya. Sabi mo, gusto mo siya maging ibon. So nung lumipad siya, birds in flight pa ganyan. Yung parang napapanood natin sa Disney. Ganong effect. Yun. CGI po yun. Oo nga, CGI. Wala pa yun sa TV. Yung para sa ibang audience, ma'am, CGI is computer graphics imaging. imaging. Okay. Oo nga, wala pa. Try natin gawin. Mahal po yun. So, oh, mahal yun. Hanapin natin. Diba? So, sige, bago, naghanap. Talagang tiyaga yun. Maghanap sila, mapapakita mo parang ano pa lang, mga... Nagpakita talaga yung mga groups. Kasi magagaling eh. But this is way back 2003. But CGI is also available technology here in the Philippines na? Or you outsource it to... Philippines. Philippines pa rin. Meron. Mga grupo-grupo lang magagaling. Okay. Yun. Okay. Na talagang yun yung gusto nilang gawin. Start-ups. Hmm. So, nakahanap. Maraming nag-demo. Hindi to pwede matigas yung wing. Hindi to pwede yung ganyan. Tapos, may nakita kami isang grupo that they are willing to dedicate their team to just doing this. Matagal kasi. Siyempre, yung, yung applications noon, yung programming noon, hindi pa ganun ka pino. 2003. Mm -hmm. Pero lumipad. Maganda. Medyo maganda. Pinalipad, lumayo, dumami. Yun. So, pwede. Doon pa lang namin present. And when was that? It was one year later. Natyagain mo because you know that this is what we're going to do. So, nung nangyari yun, nangyari yung mulawin, sure hit siya. Pero with the technologies available, ma'am, tingin ninyo yung one year na yun, mas mabilis na ngayon? Oo oh, naman. Hindi pa nagsunod-sunod na. Pero hindi lang natapos yun doon, casting. Hmm. Importante. Walang artista. <laughs> Sino? Sino maglo-launch ka? Ang maganda sa mga artista, ang swerte nila kung napili sila para mag-launch ng isang malaking uh, project. Kasi bibuild mo siya, ilo-launch mo siya as lead. No? So may pinili kaming dalawa, tapos siyempre itatandem mo kasi tandems, love teams. Mm -hmm create fan base. Ang maganda sa mga artist, ang swerte nila. Ang love team, may fans yan. Kung mag-isa ka lang, mahirap magka-fans. Mag-isa ka lang. Di ba? So, ganun yun. Yun nga, Miss Wilma, isa din yun sa tingin ko rin hindi na urban legend yun. Sabi nila, ikaw din daw ang nagpauso nun ng mga mga love teams. Kasi, ang banggit ay, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you, the love teams create fan, um, mm -hmm. you know, fan base and uh, are pitted against each other then. So, is this uh, also a formula uh, adapted by uh, networks? And how do you know if this love team will work? Noon pa may love team na, di ba? Lahat. Uh, sa mga movies na pinapanood natin, kahit foreign movies, mga local, lagi may love team yan. Yung mga unang-una pa, yung mga sampagitan pictures, meron. So, proven na yun that um, fans would follow their idols at may kasama kasing kilig at may kasamang totoong love story. Yun. Tapos minimix mo yung real tsaka real. Yun. Tapos minsan yung fans hindi na nila mag-distinguish kung ano yung totoo at hindi, di ba? 
gagamitin mo yun. So, Pero may formula ba yun? Yung sa pag-prepare? Paano mo sila ipag... Oh, bak, kunyari yung isa medyo kakulay ko, yung isa naman, dapat ang pair niya medyo maputi. Or, yung isa dapat... Mat What's sa pag-ang network, na? wala ka pang talent base, wala kang talent bench. No? Kulang yung mga artista mo. Anong gagawin mo? Kailangan may love team ka. Lalo pa sa, sa Philippine television. Ang sa atin kasi, hawak ng network ang talents eh. Nakakontrata exclusive, kontrata exclusive. Um, unlike in Hollywood, you know, hawak sila ng uh, managed ng agencies nila. Tapos kung sino yung uh, magandang project, doon sila gagawa. Ganon din sa Korea. So dito, hindi. Ngayon, kung network ka, nag-uumpisa ka, tapos wala kang talent bench, gagawin mo. So, at the time, sa um, GMA, wala kaming artista. So, konting-konti. So, kailangan lumaban din. So, sige, gawa tayo ng, ano, ng artista search, talent search. We didn't even... That artista search just came up when the writers started to contribute their, to give their inputs, the creative inputs. So, it became an artista search. It's really for all intents and purposes, a talent search. Pero sabi ko, ganito yung konsepto niyan. Pagkatapos ng search, meron tayo dapat apat na winners. Dalawang male, dalawang female, at mag-love team sila. Tapos, yung love team na yan, parang guy and pip, V and bot. Yun yun. May pegs. Lagi peg is a favorite word in in our industry, right? Okay. Yun. So, dapat ganun. Tapos may fans sila. Actually, ang nag-aaway yung fans, eh. Hindi naman ito, eh. <laughs> Di ba? Pero, ano but, yun? But you fan it. Uh, you. They. <laughs> but you just give them, you just expose them. Give them their projects. Yun. Pagkatapos nun, yung first na Star Talk, Star Talk is really one of my favorite uh, concepts. Uh, binato ko sa writers. This is the concept, this is the idea. Come back to me with a show on this. Sa madali lang, mabilis lang yung kailangan na natin eh. Balik sila. Ito po, ito po yung gusto natin gawin. Ito yung title, ito yung tagline. The title was Starstruck. The tagline is Dream, Believe, Survive. Pagkarinig mo palang go na yun. So ito yung concept, ano yung konsepto? Search ka. So sa unang salvo, lang rating yun. Hindi maganda, hindi kasi sikat eh, wala pa silang mm -hmm. ano eh. But then, like, let's wait, let's wait. Why don't we show the drama behind the life of all these mga bata na to, mm -hmm. di ba? So isa-isa yun. Finally, nagpipick up. Tapos when we, we brought them to mall shows, pwedeng gawin ng mall shows, ganyan. Ah, naging, nag-grow yung fans. And then you eliminate. <laughs> Andun din yung drama, di ba? Kasi may fans, tapos i-eliminate mo. Yun. Hanggang sa ilan nang lang matitira, anim na lang, tapos uh, pipiliin mo doon. Kapili, naka ano yun, may judges ka. Pero nakabantay, nakabantay kami sa network. Sino yun? Eto pwede natin ilagay sa ganitong show. Eto kumakanta siya, o oh, maganda rin, maganda rin siya gumalaw. Ang ganda ng ano niya, bagay sila. May makikita mo yung chemistry. Yun. yun siguro yun, yung mahirap na i-define isa-isa. Yun, raramdamin mo na lang yun. So, bagay sila, baka pwede. Yun. So, may apat yun na nanalo. They gave, they're big stars. They became big stars, so, even now. Big ibig stars. sabihin, ma'am, yung, yung selection you know, of that love team is not also, it's not just, um, you know, luck or whim, as you said. No. Diba? Parang you have to no. really mm -hmm. feel it. Diba? Uh -oh. You have to feel also uh -oh. the pulse. Meron ding pairing na nag-fail. Pero huwag natin pag-usapan yun, nag-fail. <laughs> Hindi na yun nag-grow. Yung mga nakita mo mong kumakagat, kasi they're also working on the on the tandem. Yun ang i-build. Meron ka bang ano, ma'am, parang mm -hmm. um, your most ideal um, love team? Yung mga tipong parang paborito mo na parang gusto mong Huwag paborito. Wala akong paborito kasi ano, dapat paborito natin lahat sila. Oh, sige, sige. Pero yung they really worked on it? Yes, yes, yes. Si Marian tsaka si Ding, no? Di ba? They worked on it. Naghanggang totoong buhay. Yung sa umpisa kasi, si Marian create as a... 
queen, the new network star. Ganda din ng timing kasi meron merong network uh, lead star na gustong umalis. So play on that drama also. Play on that. Tapos naghanap kami. Now, bakit siya timing? Hindi ka naman makakakuha ng bagong queen kung meron ka pang queen, di ba? Eh umalis o dilaruin mo to. Yun. But was Marian the parang ready to be queen during that time? Is she being Marami groomed? Marami aspiring. Network ano yan? Uh, effort na hanapin sino. And we had a launching. We had a launching big project then. Like yung Marimar. It's big. So sino si Marimar? Audition lahat yan. Maraming nag-audition. Tapos pinili. Tapos inayos. Internal na nila, inayos. And then, matagal na siyang Marian eh. He was doing dramas in the afternoon. She was doing dramas na post-program ng Itbulaga. Sila yung partner siya with si Oyo Boy. Sila lagi. Magaling tong batang to. Yung ganyan. And then, that opportunity came. And she was one of those who auditioned. And she was picked. Kahit gusto mong gawin tong malaking malaking project na to as you envision it, alam mong hindi pwede. So maghihintay ka. Pero kailangan meron kang output, kailangan mag-compete ka, kailangan meron kang content na gagawin. So we innovate. Yun, that's one of my favorite um, operative word also yes, yes. Uh, in, in content production. Alam namin ang iyong pagsisikap. Dama namin ang iyong mga sakripisyo. Kita namin ang pagharap mo sa bawat pagsubok. Kaya sa kabila ng mga hamon ng buhay, nandito kami para umalalay. Kasi katulad mo, gusto rin namin ang magandang bukas para sa kanya. Hatid namin ang dekalidad na edukasyon at makabagong pasilidad sa abot kayang halaga. Kaya huwag ka nang mangamba. Sasamahan ka namin ito pa rin ang mga pangarap niya. Maaasahan mong sulit dito ang mga pinagsikapan mo. Sa aming mga makabagong pasilidad at sistema ng edukasyon. Sasamahan ka namin ito pa rin ang mga pangarap niya. May lalabas natin ang aking talino at mga kakayahan niya. Kahit sa munting halaga, makakasiguro ka na makakasabay siya sa mabilis na pag-ikot ng mundo. Sa new era, karamay mo kami sa bawat hamon. Kaagapay mo kami sa bawat hakbang. Kasama mo kami sa bawat niti at tagumpay.
Eduardo sa inyong pag-birthday. Tuwan-tuwa po ako na kayo ay malakas at talaga na pagpapatuloy nyo yung mga kabutihan na nagpapalakas sa iglesia, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, muna sa buong mundo. Mabuhay po kayo and happy birthday. Thank you very much po. My sincerest happy birthday greetings to a leader who carries the faith of the Iglesia de Cristo, Breton. As executive minister of one of the biggest churches in the country today, you have inspired your people towards faithful paths and empowered them to have a voice in Philippine society. May your religious fervor flourish with AIDS and may you continue to be a unifying force among your people and other Filipinos as well. I convey my greetings to Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, Executive Minister of Iglesia Ni Cristo. We are celebrating his birthday this October 31st. Your leadership has been a beacon of hope for your brethren in these unpredictable times. And I wish you a blessed celebration and continued good health. Open for Business is back and our term of the week is from Investopedia. Our term is free-to-air or FTA. Free-to-air services are television and radio services broadcast in clear form, allowing any person with the appropriate receiving equipment to receive the signal and view or listen to the content without requiring a subscription, other ongoing cost, or one-off fee. In the Philippines, television is a primary source for media consumption. Free-to-air TV remains a household staple for the majority of the population with lower-income households relying on free content for news and entertainment. The challenge now is for broadcasters to elevate their content to compete at the global level. We have the talent and the potential, but it's up to Filipino producers to meet the challenge. And with that, our quote of the week is from actor Dwayne Johnson. He said, Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. Maraming salamat sa inyong panonood ng Open for Business. Thank you to our guest, Ms. Wilma Galvante, and our correspondents, Randy Bernardino and Jasmine Agustin. Samahan ninyo kaming muli sa Open for Business sa susunod na linggo. Learn more insights from CEOs, thought leaders, industry experts, and SMEs promoting business development in the Philippines, keeping you informed and open for business. Be ahead of the curve from vision to action. Panoorin din ang programang OFB sa Facebook at YouTube. Mag-like at mag-subscribe sa aming social media at Net25 TV. Para sa Open for Business, ako po si Cesar Vallejos. We live in interesting times. Napapansin ba ninyo, lumi 